record session today. Okay, nice. How are you? What about your weekend? Did you have time to go to the beach? Well, that was not um, too much good, no? For to go to the beach. No? A little bit stressful to the, um, this week. We are, uh, I have two exams. Two exams oh. this week. Okay. Yeah. Um, how is going? Everything was okay with this exam? Yes, I think it's okay, but yeah, you have to learn, so <laughs> not so much time this week. <laughs> okay, okay. Perfect. Um, I have a new version of, a, of the document. I continue translating every week a little bit more. And you have a new version I up, upload to, to uh, GitHub. I'm going to share my screen. And now here you can find a new version. N95 is an, the number of, the, of this document. And uh, version 5. In this version, you have a little bit more uh, sections in the document translate to English. Okay, let's go to start remembering what we saw last day. What was our last concept we learned? Who can tell me about that? Who can tell me a little bit uh, what we saw last day? We were talking about the different operators in Prolog. Different? Operators. The operators, the, yeah, some operators. What more? For the unification, for example. Unification, perfect. What, who can give me a resume um, of uh, this concept of unification? Uh, when two terms unify in Prolog? We had two different options for this unification. Who can tell me what is this definition of unification? If there are no variables, then it's when the terms are identical. Perfect, perfect. And the other one. And um, if you have variables, then you can unify them if it's possible to substitute the variables to the same um, term on the other side. Okay, perfect, Laura, thank you very much. Um, that's all, uh, if there are no variables, two terms unify, if terms are identical, exactly, exactly the same thing. And if there are variables, if we can find some sub substitution of this variable, um, in any way that at, at the end the terms will be identical okay uh, there are two ex exceptions in concept of identical who can remember these two exceptions because usually we read character by character in two sides in left right looking for exactly the same elements um, but we saw there are two exceptions in this um, way to identify when two terms are identical. Remember what these are two exceptions. Modification. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, you don't remember? Okay, um, there are two, two exceptions. One is uh, when parentheses don't modify, don't modify the structure of uh, the elements. So product say that is identical. And the other, the other option is when uh, you use the operator before, like for example, symbol plus when we add two terms, we can change that in this way. For example, something like that. If we have one plus one, that is identical uh, plus one, one. This is the eps another eps exception for this identical. Okay, nice. Um, the next, um, we started with the list or not? Do you remember? It will start with list. I think we started, but I don't remember it right now. Sorry. Okay. Let's go to start today from here. From list. An operator but that is very important. So it's, it's good to, to start just from here, from the list. Okay. Um, let's go to show. Let's go to see what it is the this aspect a list have in product. List is something like, for example, something like that. Uh, let's start with this bracket and um, our elements separate by comma. It is possible to have lists from different types, one or another list inside or whatever. And if, if it's possible to put one list inside another list, Okay, this is the way to represent list in products. Is element separate, but comma, started for this bracket. Okay, there one element very important in this list is the element head slash tail. Is this element called uh, slash that separate the first element and the tail of the list. So for example, head slash tail, unify with list one, two, three, four, and the result will be head unified with the first one and tail unify with the list two, three, four. Is um, tail, the tail is always is a list. The tail always is a list. For example, in case we have head, a tail unify with the list that contains only number one, the result is head is number one and tail T is empty list. It's a more extreme case when I try to unify the structure of H slash T and one list with only one element. And what happened if I you want to do something like that. T unified with an empty list. Probably say 
that is false. Let's go to see here in prolog. If we try to do head slash tail unify with an empty list, prolog say that is false because we need at least one element. Only one, one element, but I'll say, okay, head is number one and tail is list. If here inside we have another list, Prolot say does that the head is the list one, two, three. This is the first element of the list. So it depends what is the first element of the list, probably will say it with as one answer or another. For example, something like that. Probably the head is hola and the tail is empty list. What happened if we do that and like that? Say that is false. Because this is not list for problem. Okay, that is very important uh, operator because uh, we are using for all exercises with list. Um, what do you think uh, if you paid attention about? about induction. Um, why do you think that will be useful for us, this operator, to build the induction? Induction with list. We say, induction we say, the first one, the property have to be true for the first one element. And the second part of induction say for n greater than n zero, um, if the property p is true for n minus one, I say that then that will be true for n. Um, in case of list, n zero will be in many case, not always, but in many case, in many case will be empty list, but not always. It depends of the of it depends of the of the problem. But and um, how we can take the M minus one because I usually need to ask to the M minus one. How can get the m minus one with hair tail? The tail, if I had a list, example, head slash tail, unify with the list one, two, three, four, five. The the m minus one, m minus one, in in case of list, will be the tail, because it's exactly the list without one element. So, in uh, in list will be the tail, the list. Okay. So this operator is perfect for us to build induction because the tail is exactly the n minus one is one element minus in the list. So we are going to use this operator to build the induction in list. Perfect. So remember that this is the most probably the most important operator in In list, um, I 
Let's go, for example, to implant, to create this program that get up the name, the number of elements in a list. The application will be number of elements, elements, elements. This will be the name of this predicate. And this predicate needs a list and a number. A number. And that will be true. It is true if number unify with the uh, number of elements in this. Okay, this is the idea. Let's go to create a predicate that give us the number of elements of list using induction principle. The idea of induction, let's say, schematically, I'm gonna write property for the first one will be true. And the second part is for n greater than n zero, the property for n minus one is true. If that is true, then the property for n uh, will be true. So, um, what is the first, what is the equivalent to the first one in list? Who can tell me that? What is the equivalent? What is the equivalent in zero in list? What is the equivalent to n zero? What is the, the most simple case uh, in list? Empty list, or is it? The empty list, exactly. The empty list. Empty, empty list is, uh, this is most simple case. So I need a solution for the empty list. Um, so I have to write something like that, LM. And now, until here, the, this part of, the, of this program is only some explanation. This is not part of the code. After this symbol, prolog will, will ignore the full line. So from line one to line 11, this is only some explanation to help to the programmer to understand what, uh, what this, uh, how this predicate works. So, um, one second, I'm gonna save that. No, elements. Dot pl. We're going to save this file with the extension dot pl. The same with the other. Okay, so line 13 start the, the beginning of this program. Um, I have to write the case for n0, and the first element is the list. What is the result if the list is empty? What do I have to write here if the list is empty? What do you think I have to put here? When list is empty, what will be the value in this second argument. Remember, the, this number is that that is true if the number unify with the number of element uh, of elements in list. So 
I have to be, to do that's true, line right? 13. Zero, no? Exactly. There are not another option. Do you think this is another option to put here? It is possible to put other things that make this line true or not. What do you think? What do you think? Is this possible to put other things different that than different than zero? I'm not sure, but maybe you could leave it empty. Empty? Uh, do you think this, for example, something like empty will mean this variable that says whatever variable, that means here will be whatever. Do you think that is true? Whatever mean, means whatever, I can put here any number. Do you think that is true? If I put here, for example, I don't know, nine? No. It's not true. Or an empty list, for example. Do you think that is true? If I, the result for a, a number, because that here have to be a number had to be a number, not, I cannot put here, for example, a list, had to be a number. And the, the only option here that make, make this line 13 true, the only option is put there, one zero. I don't have other option. This is the only option that make this line true. Uh, according to the definition, I just write here from line two to line four. Let's say that is true if number unify with the number of elements in list. Perfect. Second part. Let's go to build the second part. This is the first part. This is the equivalent to the first part of induction where the property have to be true for the first one. Second part of induction say, okay, let's, uh, second part say, If a property for n greater than zero, if a property for n minus one is true, then a property for n will be true. In our case, will be something like, remember that that in prologue, we have to change the order. So in prologue, we write something like that. Uh, and minus one, we change the order in problem. Here we write uh, first the consequent, um, the consequent, and then the uh, in the right side, the antecedent. In our case, num lm, the of the list, full list, Uh, if that is true, if no, LM, the, the list without, uh, I don't know, right, list minus one element. List, this minus, um, okay, let's go to rise in this way. Um, here, if that is true, if that is true, this part is true, I can say the other part will be true. And here we have a number. Here we have a number. This is the number of elements in n minus one. And this is the number of elements here of the full list. What do you think? What is the, if here we have the number of elements or the list is without one element and this is true, if that is true, and here we have the number of elements of the list 
without one element. Um, uh, here, to do that, at the end, we are going to use a trick here. I need here the full list and here the list without one element. Here we are going to use a trick here. We are going to use a trick here. What is a trick? The trick is instead of right here a variable, sorry. The trick is right here, the structure head and tail. Here is the number. And here, to us to one minus element, what we are going to do is right here, the tail, because the tail is exactly one minus, one element minus than here. Here we have the full list and here we have the tail is list without one element. And we are going to use this trick frequently. In here, instead, write if, um, a list, a variable, or whatever, we are going to use this structure break or bracket head slash tail bracket. That means uh, when here we put a list, we are going to separate from the first one element in the head and the rest all min min minus the first one in the tail. And product induction say, okay, if that is true, if that is true, that have to be true because that is what induction tell us. Okay, if that is true, we have to make a question. If that is true, if the n minus one is true, I have to make a question. If the property for n minus one is true, is true in this case, in our case, if uh, it's equivalent to here. If num elements, the tail, and if that is true, is true, the question is what we have in N. Can you tell me if that is true? Can you tell me if that is true, what we have here in N? Can you tell me what we have here in N, if that is true? Sorry, one second. Think a little bit about that. Sorry. Think about what we have here when that is true in N. Who can answer this question? I need a break. Give me two minutes. Please think about that and give me the answer. I'm going to, to give a
to ask you in two minutes, okay? I need to make a little break and uh, I'm back. Think about that, about the question and give me the answer in two, after two minutes, okay? See you. Uh, for example, Laura? Yes. Can you hear um, me? Can you tell me what we have in N when that is true? So I was thinking if N minus one is true, then maybe the tail length is one. So N is one, but I'm not really sure. Okay, let's go to write an example. For example, let's go to write, for example, num lm. Let's go to write here an example like num lm of the full list will be, for example, two, three, four, five. To make that through will be number number five. And what happened if I had to the tail LM of the list is two, three, four, five. What is the result here? This is the value I have to put here to make that true is exactly four, one minus, okay? This is the idea. If uh, I ask for the full list, the result, for example, will be five, but, but it's, uh, if I ask for the tail, the result will be exactly one minus, it's four, okay? So let's go to create this predicate or this part of predicate like, like we have the first part here, line 14, and let's go to write the second part. Num LM, what we're going to do here is write the structure hair tail. This is a trick we're going to use always. Let's go to leave this result to the end because what I need to put here depends of the other side of the rule. No LM, the tail. And when that is true, what we're going to do is here put one new variable, for example, N, that we never used before. And that when that that is true, the question, okay, if that is true, what I have in N? Can you describe that for me? For example, Florian, can you describe what we have in N? Mm, sorry, I can't answer that right now. Uh, for example, Natalia. Natalia. Can you describe for me what we have in N? Panayota? Yes, I'm here. I'm just not sure. Can you would describe four. what? Try it for. Sorry? I would say four. It depends. It depends of the side of this of this list tail. So but it's length of the list minus one. Is the lead the length of the number of elements of the tail? Whatever side uh, we will have in this but in this list in the tail. Okay. So n is the number of elements in tail. Yes or no? Yes. Well. Okay. Perfect. Now we we well now we know what what we have in n. And the next question we have to answer is, okay, what is the relationship between this N and the, the N of the full list? Is it N plus one? Exactly, it's one more. Here, 
and we need a new variable. Let's go to call this variable n2 is n plus one. And this is the operator to, um, to resolve arithmetic operation. So we need to calculate the, this arithmetic operation here and unify the result with N2. So after that, N2 will have the number of elements of the tail plus one. And that is exactly the value we need here because N2 have to be one element more, one element more than N. And now that is true. Everyone agree with this uh, rule or not? Someone have some question about uh, how we obtain that? Liva, Liva, Cruzina, do you understood? I'm trying to understand. <laughs> okay. It's only, you, you have only to think about the relationship between the n minus one and the n. This is the, the part of the full list. And this is the result, the, the part of the list without one element. And what we have to do is try to find the relationship between this output here and, and, and this one. And usually it's only a very simple change. In this case, it's only one, add one element here, okay? So let's go to check if that works. Let's go to save this file and uh, load in prologue. Okay, now file consult and we need this, this file is called num elements. Here we have uh, something we have to resolve is line line 30. So to see line 30. Yeah, because we are not using this head. I, I need something here, but I'm not going to use this in, to use it. In this case, it's better to put this variable. Instead to write head, we're going to use this anonymous variable. That means here have to be one thing, but it doesn't matter because we are not going to do nothing with this value. Only we need to count how many elements. Okay. So after that, make, can reload this file. Now without errors, new or warnings. And now we can, for example, listing num elements, num elements. And probably will tell us, this is the code for this program. First line, is this one when this, we have an empty list, we have zero. And the second part of the program is the rule for the second part of induction that we say, okay. Uh, if we have here a list, we separate from the first one and the tail, we will ask to the tail and when that is true, here, we will have the number of elements of the tail and what we need is at one to this end to obtain the M2. That is exactly the value here. We have here a rule for, for list with zero elements and here a list, a rule for list from one or more elements because here we need one element and the tail will be empty. So that means one or more. So we have we covered 
all possible uh, side of list. Now we can, for example, ask what is the result for this one? We can ask Prolog, tell me if that is true. If that is true, it's true one, two, three, four, five, six, comma, a variable n true, and Prolog say, yes, that is true, when n unify with six. Okay, I'm gonna leave you some uh, minutes to try to do it by yourself. Try to write this line and this line, this is the first part. I have one question. So why is N6 in this case on the order on the order slide? Yeah. Yes. Uh, why is this? Because this is the number of elements of the list we have in first argument. Okay, thank you. No, it's clear. Okay. Okay. This is the reason why. Uh, so try to write this. Uh, if you want only these two lines in your code, create a new file. Uh, with, uh, for example, not a bad in Windows, for example, this, you can put this one, sorry, not this one, this code and save, save as, for example, num elements, num LMs. I will call new LM2, for example, LM2, if you want, dot PL. And you have to change that documento de texto, change and, and write here, todos los elementos, all elements. Because otherwise, we will put at the end the extension dot tx, txt. So we need to write, select this uh, type, whatever, whatever type, and here write new element uh, two. Okay, and now we have this file, new element two, and you can uh, load with prolog here doing the file consult num elements two num lm two okay uh, I'm gonna leave you some minutes to do that by yourself and after that please tell me if you can save and test this program for you okay and tell me if you have any problem with this trying to save and test this program okay I will reconnect after five minutes or a little bit more. Try to, to save this code in your file and try to, this, this part, the code, I'm gonna leave this, this screen for you. Try to create this file, with these two, three lines and up, uh, load with a prologue and check if that works or not. Okay, see you in five minutes. Yes, I tried it, but I have some error, so I don't know. Uh, Alexander, can you share your screen to see what happened? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. 
Let me see what second. Uh, can you can you put this? Uh, I think there's an S missing. It says N two E N plus one at the end. Ah uh, yeah. Yeah yeah okay. You have to save. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah now. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, perfect. Everyone uh, have this code working? Panagiota. Uh, Laura? Yes, but I'm using the browser version right now, but I managed to save it as well. Uh, you used the, I didn't understood. Um, One time you talked about the browser version of Prologue. Ah, so okay, the, the yes. browser version. Okay, okay. And that works for you in this browser version? Yes, right now it's worked, so. Okay, perfect, perfect. Benjamin. Benjamin? Mm, yes. Uh, it works on my side too. That's that work for you? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Florian. Florian Goite. Yes, it's good for me. I've already done with browser version. Okay, perfect. Alexander? Noster? Well, we saw just my solution, so yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. Elsa. Uh, I had some technical difficulties, but uh, I'm doing it right now. Uh, You're you are trying to do? Yes, no? yes, yes. Okay. Natalia, it's working for you? Sorry, can you repeat? I, I I'm can't hear. Okay. I'm okay. Okay, Natalia. Natalia. Okay, Adriana. Natalia uh, Gotziek. Yes, it's everything okay. Okay, nice. Adriana Soviska. Uh, also, everything worked, so it's okay. Okay, uh, Liva Kusina. Yes, it works for me okay, as well. Nice. Okay. Colleen, Wilson? Yes, it's okay for me too. Okay, nice. Perfect. David Guerrero. David uh, Milos, Zemla. Dina. Uh, Lubjitsa, Lubisa. Um, I had some connection problems yes, yes, at the I beginning, but connection. now it's fine. Okay, okay. Mirna. Okay, now it's it's important that you have this code working because this is the first one, and after that, uh, we're, we're going that will be more complicated. So, it's it's interesting that you you have you know have to to save this file of the for example this um, online version of sa saving this file in in your file in your computer and upload with uh prolog okay nice next one next one next ex exercise is page in page 70 is do the reverse Reverse of list. Let's go to try the reverse of a list. Uh, in this case, da, da, da. you can say reverse. 
The first argument will be a list, and the second one will be a list with the result that contains the same elements that the first list, but in reverse order. And we're going to resolve that using induction. Using induction. Um, Let's save this file as reverse PL. Okay. Can't I'll, see your screen. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Now? Yes, thank you. Okay, perfect. You're welcome. Uh, now, let's go to call that my reverse because my reverse will be um, have the, the first argument is list, and the second one is the list, this list result. When it's true, when it's er, er, unifies with a list containing the same elements of, uh, as it have, but in reverse order. So let's go to apply here induction first part of induction is the schematically to have to be true. And the second part of induction is for n written in zero. If the property is true for n minus one, then I can say the property will be true for n. Okay. Um, how I can give a solution for the most little list, the first one. What do you, what do you want to, to write here to give an answer for the first part of induction, P and zero? What do you think? Let's go to try to do this exercise all together. What I have to put here? Here inside, here we we'll have a variable, comma, another one, and a dot at the end. What I were to put here to make, to have a solution for the N0 or for most little list. Just two empty lists, no? Empty list. Okay, two empty lists. If empty list, what is the result, another empty list. Perfect. Perfect. Is this another solution or any, any other option to reverse an empty list or not? We have only this, this option. Line 11, we have only this option. The second part of, of their induction is for, for uh, whatever side of the problem greater than the first one, if the property of n minus one is true, then the property from n will be true. So here the trick again, here the trick again is write head and tail this structure instill, instill the full list. And then my reverse, I have to ask to the tail and see if that is true, what we have in error in this result variable. If that is true, my, my reverse is true of the tail, uh, what we have here in error? The head. The head, no, was uh, try to describe what we have in variable error when tail, it, when that is true, when all that is true. Try to describe what we have in error. Mm -hmm. 
For example, for example, for example, Liva. Can you help me with that and just try to describe what we have here in this uh, right part of this uh, rule? Mm, I'm not sure I can help you. Actually, I don't understand this. Uh, okay, it's nothing, okay, it's not, it's not nothing related with programming computers at this point, it's only, uh, Liva, can you, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I okay. can. Okay, Liz, uh, read this line. Do you know what, what this, uh, program do? Can you can you read this line and tell me what this program do? What that means? Probably we need a break. We need a break. Okay, let's go to take a five minutes break. Okay, I'll be back in five minutes to to continue with this exercise. Don't worry if at the beginning you don't understand. There are some probably some many new things for you, but uh, try uh, only to to pay pay attention about this simple idea. Try to to understand what. That's the most important thing is what we want to do. That is the question. Don't worry now the way to resolve. Only put the put the focus on what we want to do with this uh, with this program. Okay, that is the most important thing now. No, Forget now to try to resolve, only put the focus on in what we want to do with, the, with this program, okay? If you don't understand this line, we can make, for example, uh, with some examples, something like, for example, if my reverse of the list one, two, three, four, five, and here variable, and ask that to prolog, prolog say, that is true. And prolog say, okay, that is true when R unify with the list five, four, three, two, one, two, one. So what that problem do is make the make reverse of the list we put here, the first argument. Okay, so please put the focus now in what we do and not uh, in how to resolve. Let's go to make this break in five minutes and back then, okay? See you in five minutes. Okay. Um, Liva, can you tell me what the programs do or not? This at this, at this point, we are not uh, exactly uh, putting the focus in in how to create the program, mostly we we have to understand what the, the what we have what we want to do. Okay. Mm, we want that this list in reverse is in reverse order. Okay, that's that that we want to resolve. Take a, a, a string in this case a, a list and make this reverse. We want to give this um, 
to change the order of this list. Perfect. So how this is one we want to what what we want to do is the answer is I want to make the reverse of this list. So how we are going to resolve that? We're going to resolve that using induction. Induction have two parts. The first one is uh, the empty list. So the 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 answer is uh, this one. If I have an empty list, the only option for the result I have is have an empty list because there are not elements inside. So the, the only way to make this line lix uh, 17 true is to put there exactly an empty list. Everyone, uh, there's someone, there's someone that don't see why we put here an empty list. Please, if someone don't understand, don't see why I put there that there, please um, that made an answer and question. Sorry about that. Everyone understood that line seventeen. Is every that okay for everyone or not? Okay, I suppose, I suppose, yes. Okay, so we have that uh, true. And the second part is, okay, let's go to create this rule. Let's go to ask for the M minus one. To ask for the M minus one, we need to separate the list between the first one and the tail. And now, now we have here the tail, we can ask to the tail, my reverse of the tail. Um, now we need to describe what we have here in R. So, um, for example, um, Panayota, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you, okay, <laughs> can you, can you describe what we have here in R? We have the elements from one to five. Uh, the elements of one to five depends on which, because that is in general. Here we have a list. Here, initially we have a list. I don't have idea what is the content of this list. I only know that here we have the head and here we have the tail of the list. But at this moment, I have no idea what is the content of this list. We are going to try as most general as possible. So um, this is the list and this is the tail of the list. Can you describe uh, what we have in R? It's the head. No. What we have in air is not is not the is not the head. What this program do? Can you tell me what this program do? Yes, it reverses the elements. It, it exactly it it reverses the element of the first uh, variable here. What we put here. that reverse. So we have, what we have here in R? It's, um, it's interesting to try to explain with your words what we have in R. Someone can help to describe what we have in her. The tail in reverse. Exactly. Exactly. The elements of the tail in reverse order. Perfect. So now we know what we have in her. And next question is what do we what do we have to do in to her 
to have this result of the full list to make that true. What we have to put here, what mod or what modification I have to do to this error to have the full list in reverse order? At the end, of the, at the end of the reverse yeah. list, we put the head. So we yeah. put the list with the, with the R and then the head. Exactly, we have to put the head at the end of R, no? If we can put the head at the end of R and put the, the result of this uh, adding here, that will be true. So how we can do that? We can do that in an easy way using the uh, pre, uh, predicate pre, pre, that is already created in Prolog is called Appen. Appen add to um, or create a new list from, uh, for example, here. I'm gonna give you some examples to know that will be a two. Uh, let me one second. I'm gonna give you some examples of use of Appen. Appen, for example, this one, two, three, and the list two, uh, four, five, six. The result will be what happen do is put the element of the first list following by the elements of the second list in in error. So as we want to put the tail, sorry, the head at the end, here we have a list. If we put the, the head between brackets, that means that is a list. And this is more easy way to add one element at the end of a list with append. So for example, here we have append. We want to put the element, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And if we want to put at the end element six, we can do something like that put the element six between, between, between bracket, that means that is a list. And what is the result? The result is a new list with all elements, including six at the end. So this is the way we're going to put the, the head at the end of R. And we need a new variable that we We'll uh, call this variable L2. What what we have to put here to make that true? R2. Exactly. R2. Now save that. Let's go to save that and check if that program works. So here. For example, file consult and reverse. Let's go to load. There are no errors. That means that have to be okay. We can do the listing to check if everything is okay. It's my reverse. And this is the first line, first part, first part of the induction. And second part, the rule that ask to the tail, and that when that is true, we only need to add the head at the end. So my reverse, list one, two, three, four, five, six, and now one variable, I can say prolog, that is true, and prolog say, okay, that is true if, Error, it's exactly six, five, four, three, two, one. So we have, we just create a program using induction to make the reverse of any list. Okay, 
uh, take some minutes to put this uh, code inside uh, or this online version of Prolog or save into a file and make the consult. Take some minutes to do it by yourself. Put all the elements, this two line, this line, and this, uh, this line too, inside the file, and try to test if that works. Okay, and see you in five minutes. It's okay. Do you have time to, to test the program? Yes, I just tested it and it worked. Okay, nice, super. So that will be your first, your first uh, program with the list. Um, any question? You have any question um, so far about the exercise we did? No. Uh, one question. Do okay. we have to use the, the variable R2 or could we just put the whole phrase, the append uh, the formula just there? Line here, line 20? Yeah, like let's put line 20 instead of the R2 and line 19. Um, you have to use a new variable you can you can call to this variable whatever name the result or or whatever name doesn't matter what is the name but you have to put here the same name okay so we have to do like like um different uh, statements we can't just put it all in one into the my reverse function um you have to do that. This uh, append um, will give you this head at the end. You have to save or store this result in a variable. The name doesn't matter. You can use the name, whatever you want. Uh, we use this R2 to simplify, but you can put here whatever name you want. And the most imp the important thing is to what you put here, the same variable you have to put here. I don't know yeah. if that answered your question or not. Is, is no, not, not really, but no. I guess it's fine because I guess it doesn't work. Oh, I thought it would. Um, it, does, it doesn't work for you. You try and it doesn't work. Uh, no, no, I haven't tried. I, I was just wondering if, if it works. Like if you would do in, in Java in a function that you could um, like do this. Um, uh, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> can't really describe it in English. Okay, because you, if if you try to do that in other programming language, it depends. Uh, but but are quite different. You're you're talking to Java or other programming languages. Um, they are not assist the mechanism of of unification. Uh, probably the things don't work exactly the same. It depends of the of the code. But sometimes it doesn't work exactly the same. So it is quite different. But if you want to use the same idea to other program language, different to Prolo. Okay. That answer your question or not? Um, still not, not really, but it's fine. Doesn't matter. It was just some syntax thing, not, not really important. Okay. Okay, okay, nice. Um, perfect, more, more questions? You have more questions? Everyone test the program, all works. It's very important at this, at this moment that you can try, you, you try to do this exercise because this is the most, this is the beginning, most simple one. 
and it's important to you try to understand. If you have any question, please ask, because later that will be more complicated. At the same time, you will have the, the record the video. You can see it again. If you have question, we can use this the this uh, day, the Wednesday session from 12 30 to uh, 2 and 30. We can use this time to resolve your question. If you if you need, you can we can do more exercise if you if you need. So Mm, it's very important to, to try to clarify your question now. Okay. Nice, perfect. Don't worry. If, if you, that uh, probably that is totally new for you, at the beginning, you will get a little bit confused about this idea of this uh, type of foramen. But don't worry, we're going to go to very, very slow every week doing this exercise and you will have time to make your questions or resolve your questions okay perfect so if you don't have more questions we can see you next day okay no more questions no more Nice, perfect. So see you next day. Okay. See you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Bye.